Hey guys, this is Ed Rowe. Today I'm going to show you how you can create a simple D3 bar chart in React with hooks, just like this. Okay, so let's let's go to my project. Um, right now I have installed Create React App. I already installed it and I cleaned a few things up. I cleaned all the information over here and I'm probably going to remove this as well. And now I'm going to install D3 in our terminal okay so when once that's installed um, we are going to import a few things we're going to import react we're going to import use state use ref and use effect and we're going to set up a data variable grabbing info using use state and we're going to set up an array of values. This is just going to be mock data that we're going to use to display our bar chart. So I'm just going to put a bunch of random numbers in here. Five. And I'm going to set up a use ref variable. This will be needed to create our SVG for D3. Here, we're going to create a use effect. Like so. And with this use effect, we're going to put as a dependency the data that we have. So that anytime data changes, or once we receive the data the first time, this use effect will be re triggered so that we can render our SVG anytime our data changes. And the last thing we need to do is set up an SVG element like so and we're going to give it an attribute of ref like so and we're going to pass in our SVG ref. This simple setup allows you to um, allows us to use SVG to control our DOM. Um, a lot of confusion with React and D3 is that they both control the DOM. However, you need to let D3 handle the controlling of the DOM, so that's why we are using use ref to do this. Okay, so now that's set up, now you can note that anything we write in the use effect over here is going to be relevant to D3 code. So for D3 code, we have four things that we always want to look at, or four things we usually want to set up. And that is first setting up the SVG container, which determines the overall box, everything's contained in, and then we're gonna set up the scaling, which means that we're going to convert data into relevant numbers for our chart so that the numbers will go to the right spot or get to the right scale according to the size of the box and then we're going to set up the axes so this will set up basically the uh, ticks and annotation and just everything that is relevant to knowing what the data represents and finally we have to set up the SVG data so this actually draws the SVG um, according to the right scale width, height etc etc all right so let's start up with setting up an SVG container so this part is the most straightforward so we're gonna set up the width of the container by setting up a variable for that and we're gonna set up the height I've already predetermined these values, um, but you can set any width and height you want. And then we're going to set up our SVG variable by using D3 select SVG ref dot current. Um, I have forgotten to import D3, and we will do this as D3 from D3 like so. 
Um, okay, so this right here, d3.select, we're basically referencing the use ref, and we're targeting the current value. And from here, we are going to give it an attribute of width, like so. And we're going to give it an attribute of height, like so. So this is actually setting the container width and height. And we are going to do a few extra things. We're going to give the overflow of visible. So anything that overflows, usually the annotations or the axes, kind of overflows the boundaries. This allows us to see it. And then we're also going to add a style of margin top 75. 75 pixels. These are all predetermined values that you can see everything that's going on. We're going to set up a container to represent that. Next, we want to set up the scaling. All right, for scaling, so we're going to start with the X scale. And we're going to use scale band. So this allows us to get something of like a bar chart scale. And to do this, we're going to set a domain using our data and mapping it, give it a value i. We're going to map it with the index value. So this allows us for the x scale to determine the number of data points that we want to show. And we're going to set up a range from 0 to the actual width in terms of pixel, how much pixels we have. And then we're also going to set up a padding in between these boxes. So that is our X scale. We are also going to have to set up the Y scale, which is a bit more simpler. And we are going to use a scale of linear. A lot of these are in the documentation of D3. Um, for this, this is just a matter of knowing these things. But a lot of times you use scale linear. Sometimes you use scale band for a bar chart like this one. And then we're going to go and add a domain from 0 to height, like so. And we're going to set up a range. And this one is going to be from H to 0. So a little confusing, but when you're dealing with the Y scale, just realize we always start from the top left. And so that makes our range inverted. So right here, you're going to start from the height, and you're going to go to the 0 value. All right, so that is our scaling. The next thing we want to set up is the axes. So basically all the ticks and the legend and annotation that we are going to show. So we are going to start with the x-axis and we're going to start with axis bottom. So this allows us to set up the bottom axis and we are going to pass in the x scale that we've already created. We're going to give it some ticks and this is going to be set for data Dot length. So this represents um, the number of values we have here. So you're going to have a tick. You're going to have a tick for each one right here. For the y axis, d3 axis left. We're just going to give it hard-coded value of 5 because we have 1, 2, 3, okay maybe not 5 but it doesn't really matter what ticks we set it's a little confusing with this but what D3 does it chooses a number uh, ticks on this side that is closest to a very even value so it chooses a value that is um, pleasant I guess <laughs> so you would just look on the documentation for that it's a little confusing 
but you guys can look at it. All right, and then we're going to append a group value like so. And we are going to call our x axis. And we are going to give it an attribute of transform. And we are going to shift this because right here we're going to append a group tag to this guy. We are calling the x axis and we are going to transform it. Now, for the x-axis, as we said, it always starts at the top. So for the x-axis, we need to translate it. So we go and shift it down to the bottom by using our height, like so. And we are going to do the same thing. Ooh, don't know what that is. SVG, and we're going to append it to group tag. And we are going to call our y axis like so so that would represent our axes that we have represented here and then finally we're going to actually draw the data and we're going to select and we're going to give it a bar tag like that and we are going to pass in our data so right here, we're basically setting it up by selecting what we have, giving the data, and we're going to join it with the rectangle tag. And from here, we're going to give it some attributes. So we're going to give the x attribute, and we are going to map it with our index values passed into our x scale function that we've created. That sets up the x scale. Now we do the same thing with the y, but this time we could just pass in the y scale function, like so. We don't need to pass the index because it because we don't need like this side right here is just the straight values. We just have to map that out. For these ones, we just, we're taking each tick as a number. And finally, we're going to give it an attribute of width. And we're going to take the band width. Oops, I made a mistake. So we take the scale and we grab the band width, which represents the width of each band that we've created, we're going to create and we're going to give it a height as well. And these values is going to be the inverse of our y's. Again, like we said before, we need to subtract the height from the y scale and we need to pass in our value like so. So again, we're mapping, we're grabbing our y scale, we're passing in value and we're subtracting it from the height. So that would give us this height of each of these bars. Okay, and from there, we are going to run it. So I'm going to close this old one because I already had that set up and we are going to run our application and voila, just like I showed you, we now have our bar chart. And that's it. D3 charts in React aren't too scary. You just need to break them down into basic components and they're pretty understandable. There's a lot of documentation, a lot of know-how in terms of what you need for D3, but as you keep creating these charts, it'll become easier and easier and a lot of it will start to make a lot of, e a lot of sense really quick. Anyways, let me know what you think. So like, comment below, and if you have any questions, also subscribe, and I will see you next time.